everybody, this is Hammer Striker here. Today I've got a Beretta PX4 Storm on the table. This happens to be the full size version. Uh, you may have seen our, our, our previous video on the subcompact. A local viewer lent this to us so that we could do a review on the full size. There are a few differences. Unlike many of the other guns where the subcompact and the compact are pretty much the same gun, just different size, there are some differences. I'm going to do the review on this and then we'll also do a follow-up comparison of the details of the differences between the two. But to start out with, this is a full-size gun in the service weapon kind of category. It holds 17 plus 1. It's 7.6 inches long. It's 5.5 inches tall. And I'll show it's clear before I go any further. I do have a clear weapon. It's 1.2 inches thick at the bottom and 1.4 inches at the top. And that does kind of give it the appearance of being kind of fatter than it is. On the full size, it's a little less noticeable because it is a bigger gun, but it, it kind of makes it look chunky. From an ergonomic standpoint, it's very comfortable to hold on to. It fits well in the hand. It's got all of the right kind of grooves that, that you'd want it to be. And it's easy to get to the controls. You'll notice that the safety is ambidextrous, but it's up on the slide so it kind of stays out of the way. It's a little more difficult to get to with the thumb, especially if you, you've got average size hands. But it does stay out of the way and it doesn't smack you if, you've, you know, if you're gripping it from the other side. It's got an accessory rail, Picatinny accessory rail, right there, with a single slot so you can hang lights, lasers, and various other things on it. The sights on it are quite nice. It's a three dot arrangement, very easy to see, very easy to pick up. And they are front and rear dovetailed. You can see the rear there and the front so that you can replace the sights, interchange them as you see fit. Though I did find that these sights were really easy to see, I'd probably be less inclined to change them unless I were going to go to you know, something like a, a fiber optic or a night sight. And you'll see that the rear sight has a kind of a flat spot on it that can be used to belt cock it, boot, table, or whatever else you want to do. As far as the safeties on this gun, it does have the external safety. It also has a firing pin block, so it is a drop safe weapon. When I get it apart, I'll show you, you know, how that operates. And and the safety also acts as a decocker, which when you put it down, it decocks it. But when you pull the hammer back, you'll see that the safety actually rotates the firing pin out of the way. Right there. So there's absolutely no way when this is in the safe position or if you're decocking it, there's no way this gun's going to fire. The firing pin's actually not even pointed at the hammer and or the remaining path of the firing pin. So it's a, it's a very safe gun to carry, whether you're carrying it in the decocked position, uh, chambered, or you're choosing to carry it not chambered. It does have replaceable back straps, so this little section down here at the bottom can be interchanged. It's kind of a difficult process to do it. There's this little spring at the bottom you've got to pry out with a screwdriver, and then pry the other back strap off, and then put the new one on. You may have to tap it in with a hammer. So it's not the easiest mechanism to interchange back straps, uh, but it is possible. You can see this little U-shaped spring down in here. You've got to pry up to be able to change the back straps. The magazine release can be flopped either side. It is not ambidextrous, but it is reversible. And you can also get different size magazine releases. Now the reversibility is, it's there right from the, you know, when you get the gun, there's nothing else you have to buy. But if you want the different sizes, you do have to buy those independently, and this filler will, will be changed out as part of doing that. So you have a small one, you can have a medium, or you can have a large. The back straps do come with it. The magazines, you can get the flush mount magazine like this one. I'm going to go back in. It does sit very flush. And it's got a little bit of a lip at the front, but most people, unless you have a very large hand, won't have their fingers anywhere near it. It does have a full-size grip. But there are also larger magazines. And I have snap caps in this one that I'll be using a little bit later when I demonstrate the trigger. So these are not live rounds. But this is an extended magazine. Adds a couple extra rounds of capacity. It does hang down a little bit, and it gives you, you know, a little bit more grip if you've got larger hands. So there are some flexible options available for our magazines. The gun weighs 27.7 pounds, so it's, it's not a really heavy gun for a gun this size. 
Now the trigger on it, I did mention, is DASA, and in the manual they recommend against dry firing. They say extended, basically the way they word it is excessive or extended dry firing will damage the firing pin. So I'm going to load this gun up with snap caps and inert dummy rounds to protect the firing pin so that I can then uh, fire, you know, I can dry fire it without harming anything. So I, when I did that, I had the safety in the decock position, so you'll notice it automatically reset the hammer down. Turn the safety off, I'm now in double action mode. The double action trigger on this gun is 9 pounds. It's very long, it's very heavy, but it is smooth, and it breaks at the back. So I'm going to do that again. There's a little bit of take up, you know, very minimal take up, a long, heavy pull, and then at the back it breaks, and you'll notice it breaks all the way at the back. With the uh, subcompact, that causes a little bit of problems. With this gun, it wasn't so much of a problem. It was you know, easier to shoot well and stay on target with it. But that is a long trigger pull, and it does end up putting your hands in kind of an off position. And it makes it a little bit harder to get used to shooting this well. Spend a little time with it, focus on it, you can get there. But that trigger, that's just a long travel for the trigger. So now I'm going to cycle it to put it in, into single action mode. And I had more than one snap cap, so there's still one in the chamber. Now you'll notice the trigger is back. The hammer is back. There's a significant amount of take up, which is a very light take up. And then I'm on the wall. And then the break. Now if I were to reset it, the reset is right there. It clicks. And it's pretty much all the way out. And then there's take up again to get back to the wall for another break. Now the single action break is right around, around 5 pounds 5 ounces and it's actually a quite nice crisp short break but again it's all the way at the back. So as triggers go on DASA guns it's a little bit longer than you might like and a little bit further back but it is a light and it is a smooth trigger. It wasn't gritty, scratchy and there wasn't really any stacking that went on. Just kind of long. So let me go ahead and pull out the snap caps so that I can take this gun apart and show you the details of the internals on it. Disassembly on this is fairly easy. I'm going to decock it so that there's no risk of me accidentally dropping the hammer when the slide is off and damaging the frame. What I'm going to do is it comes apart a lot like a Glock. I'm going to pull it back just a hair. All I'm doing is taking tension off this little spring set. There's one of these on either side. You pull them down and they slide right off. Now one thing I'll note on these, unlike a Glock, they do stick out fairly well and there's a recess in there. So getting a hold of them is actually really easy. Anybody's taken apart Glocks or similar guns with this type of mechanism, you know, you can, they can be difficult to get a hold of. This one, the way it's designed and the way it's recessed and curved, it kind of just naturally guides your hands into getting a hold of it. So it's really easy to take this thing apart. I'm going to set the uh, frame aside and we'll talk about the slide first. Now when you look at this, you're going to notice it's different than many of the other guns you, that you've seen. You've got this large block here at the middle, and then the recoil spring guide rod is sliding through it. This has got a rotating barrel. It's a 4-inch barrel, and it does rotate. And when you look at it right through the breech, it's actually, you can see that it's a little different than what you're used to. So the way this thing comes apart is you pull this locking block off, and it's under a hair of spring tension, but not bad. And then you'll see that the recoil spring slides through it. And at the bottom, you've got a couple of curves and a little protrusion at the middle. And this is the guide for the rotating barrel. Looking at the barrel itself, that protrusion that I showed you, that little star-shaped protrusion, slides in here, and that's what rotates the barrel. So the barrel rotates into locked position or unlocked position and exposes a little bit of a kind of like a feed ramp, I'll show you when I get the barrel out of here, that allows it to chamber almost straight in, but at the same time the, the rotating barrels, the concept behind that is it mitigates recoil. It's a bigger, heavier gun, 9mm, you really don't notice recoil anyway. I didn't notice the recoil characteristics of this to be any different than any other gun I fired. Uh, it wasn't bad, it wasn't any particularly lighter but it did work well. The gun was reliable, we had no troubles with this mechanism, even though my experience with this mechanism and other guns, it does like to be well oiled. This isn't a gun that functions well if it's dry. So to pop the barrel out, you kind of rotate it till it's in the unlocked position, 
and then it slides out. I'm going to put the slide down and I'll show you the barrel. You can see the protrusions on the barrel that are part of the rotating and you can see the feed ramp right here, this minimal feed ramp that rotates into position when the gun is open and as it loads around then it rotates around to the lock position to be fired and then rotates back as you pull the slide back. Now looking at the slide itself you'll see that there are some ridges in here on either side and these are guides for that rotating barrel to, to ride in and then at the back you've got the drop safety mechanism which is right there by my finger, by my little finger and of course typical of the, the Beretta, the other Beretta S guns like the Cougars and things like that you've got numerous little grooves and cutouts for various parts of the functioning mechanism slides a little busier than some others and you can see parts of the safety decocker mechanism that will push on arms in the frame I'll show you when I get the frame to operate the various other functions so there's the slide nice and smooth solid good finish on it so let me move and show you the frame okay so here's the frame frame is a polymer frame it has metal inserts at the front for the slide guides and you can see they're thick and robust and solid and then at the back as well and then here's the various arms there's the ejector this is the arm that operates the decocker so this will be pressed down on by the by the safety mechanism to decock the gun you have the ejector here so overall you've got a kind of a busy slide the majority of the feed ramp on the gun is actually right here on the on the actual block here rather than being built into the barrel and that's part of that rotating barrel mechanism so you get you know the feed ramp is here and it's polished it's more like a, a like a semi polish it's not a mirror polish but it is nice and smooth and as I mentioned earlier the gun just it ate everything that we wanted it to overall it's a well constructed gun frame and slide so at this point I'll go ahead and begin to put it back together so we'll start with the slide and what we're going to do is we're going to drop the barrel in and you have to rotate it where that groove is up and then you'll see that it kind of just sits in place and then we're going to set that down for a second take the guide rod, the narrow end slides through this little central block they call it that goes in and then the easiest way to do this is to just push the central block down and forward and it will engage that little notch in the barrel and as you push it forward it will rotate the barrel a little bit that's the easiest way to get this in place if you try to get everything positioned so you can just push it in you, you'll spend hours doing it just push down on it, push forward, it'll snap in place and you'll notice that it does have a tendency to want to pop up a little bit now on the Beretta Cougar we had that actually caused repeated failures on this gun that doesn't seem to cause any problem whatsoever but you may need to, when you go to slide the frame and slide back together, you may need to push down on this just a hair to get it to go back together. Now, getting the slide back onto the frame is relatively easy. I just hold that with my thumb a little bit, line it up with the guides, slide it back and rack it. And just like most of the striker guns that you're used to, Glocks and everything else, it auto locks and it's back in business ready to operate again. Now because I have the safety on, it's automatically decocking itself every time I close it back up. Overall, we found the gun fun to shoot, easy to shoot, minimal recoil, it was comfortable. The longest trigger made it a little more difficult to get consistent shots, but you know, you spent a little time, focus on it a little bit in practice, you know, we were able to dial it in. But I did notice when we pulled out our Beretta 92 that we happened to have with us, I was getting much faster follow-up shots and tighter groups with that so that that trigger does make a difference. Let me show you a couple other guns in this size category just for size comparison if you're trying to see, you know, I can tell you the numbers but in order to see what it really means I've got a Glock 17 here which also holds 17 rounds and I've got a Beretta 92. So we'll start with the Glock which is unloaded. This is a Glock 17. This is your kind of your standard Glock service weapon size gun and what you'll see if I put them side by side that in the line up beaver tail to back they're almost identical in length and nearly identical in height the Glock is actually when I get them lined up and they're sitting you know straight up and down on their their slides 
they're almost exactly the same height. They have the same capacity, same length, roughly the same height. So the footprint on these two guns is roughly identical. So if you're wanting to see what this looks like and you can't find a PX4 full size and you at least want to see what size it is, you can go find a Glock 17. They're, they're, they're very easy to find and it'll give you a rough idea. Now I'm going to compare it to one of its other hammer-fired brothers, which is this Beretta 92, which is also unloaded. And you'll see that the PX4 is a little bit shorter than the Beretta. If I line them up beaver tail to beaver tail, the uh, 92, they're both Berettas, uh, the 92 is almost an inch longer, but almost the exact height grip. So it does put this solidly into that service gun territory. So hopefully that gives you some information on the PX4 Storm. It's a very well manufactured, very high quality gun. It is probably a good concealed carry gun if you're looking to carry a full size, you know, inside the waistband. Uh, obviously it's too big for a pocket carry, but it does give you a lot of capacity in a reasonable size footprint. I want to thank our local viewer for letting us borrow it. If you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, and have a great day. Thank you.